Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Good evening, our dear uh, colleagues. Good evening, our attendees. Uh, I am going today to speak about one of the problems in our ICU, which is the hemostasis in the ICU. Very essential to predict any problems with hemostasis or coagulopathy or thrombocytopenia and so on. Today, I will speak about thrombocytopenia in the ICU. And I think the incidence is too high because of the multiple diseases the patient suffering from it, which is exposed to thrombocytopenia in the ICU. Always the normal number of uh, platelets in, in any normal person is from 150 to 400. Less than 150,000, we regard it as thrombocytopenia and we have to search for the cause. At the same time, you have to exclude the pseudo-thrombocytopenia, which may be due to the anticoagulant effect of some anticoagulant used for collection of your blood sample as editor, which makes the platelets stack together and give you false impression of thrombocytopenia. Uh, this is a simple and simplified figure really for detection of what is the underlying cause of thrombocytopenia. You have to take the history from your patient is suffering from any disease, he is suffering from autoimmune diseases. And so any medication taken by the patient, especially sulfonamide, uh, heparin use, may cause that, alcohol use, which may create worse to liver problem, or liver cirrhosis, which cause thrombocytopenia. Uh, look for the clinical situations, bruising, diptychia, hedemances, uh, if it is uh, so just superficial bleeding or internal bleeding. Also ask about and see for any autoimmune disorders which may predispose or may cause some sort of thrombocytopenic uh, problems like IPD. Uh, look for fever or headache, hematuria, abdominal pain as in PPD or thrombocytopenic, thrombocytopenia or hemolytic chronic syndrome. Uh, look for stigmata of liver disease. It is a common uh, uh, cirrhotic patients suffering from thrombocytopenia, urinomegaly, which causes some sort of sequestration of the platelets leading to thrombocytopenia also. Uh, obtain the peripheral blood smear, very important to uh, detect or check for any schistocytes or any signs of hemolysis, like in case of PPD and DIC and microangiopathic uh, hemolytic anemia. Also rule out platelet clumping, as I told you in the previous slide. Uh, look for the lab results as BP, PPP, which can guide you, and fibrinogen and the D-dimer, which is the end results of fibrin uh, degradation, there is excessive fibrinolysis. Look for thyroid function, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, all these causes really some sort of thrombocytes. Viral infection like hepatitis C and HIV, very common to cause thrombocytopenia. And we may detect the liver disease with uh, infection or with hepatitis C from the thrombocytopenic manifestations. Examine the central line and examine the patients carefully and look. If you exclude all these factors, you can, you have to search for ITP or immunogenic thrombocytopenia. We have to look for our patient and see if this bleeding is, what, what is the type of bleeding? Superficial bleeding as mucosal bleeding or visceral bleeding due to coagulation effect from <coughs> the efficiency of coagulation. If it is immediate bleeding, <coughs> will be platelet source or delayed bleeding will be from coagulation rescue. Look for other medical conditions, underlying diseases, any uh, organ failure, and so on. And um, important to look for drugs. Milk drugs our, in our ICU really cause some sort of thrombosis. Uh, identify the defect in your platelets through lab investigations. And you have to differentiate between thrombocytopenia and thrombocytoacenia. Maybe a normal number, but not functioning well. This function of the platelets causing some sort of bleeding and increasing the, the bleeding time. Uh, look for the peripheral smear, look for the platelet count. Also, lab results, PT, prosomal time, some time, uh, activated partial, some time, very important in guiding you to the 
coagulation uh, problem in your uh, patient. I don't miss the mixing tests for detecting if there is an, any inhibitor to your uh, platelets. And also check for fibrinolysis, maybe excessive fibrinolysis as in cases of liver cirrhosis. We will find the D-dimers I, which is the result of fibrin degradation, or FDD, which is the result of fibrinogen and uh, Acquired thrombocytopenia, as we said, uh, caused by many causes, really, platelets as uh, blocked. So maybe platelet destruction from immune mechanism, as in case of immune thrombocytopenic uh, or maybe not non-immune, or maybe due to sequestration in the spleen, or maybe infection in the bone marrow or some sort of neoplasia or, new, <coughs> or bone marrow infiltrations. Also look for drugs and for toxins which affect the bone marrow. The common ICU causes of thrombocytopenia, which is sepsis, is the main cause of thrombocytopenia and vice. Cause of thrombocytopenia in here. The IC disseminated intravascular coagulations, and I think this is accepting or clarifying in different degree, maybe minor degree, higher degree, but it causes a micro and some so and also thrombocytopenia. Massive blood loss or immunodegradation, drug induced, which may cause immune thrombocytopenia or non immune thrombocytopenia. Heparin induced head, which is very important, and we have to, uh, to consider it in ICU and, and, uh, <coughs> and take care for all its returns because, because it, if we neglect that, it can lead to amputation of limb or end of the life. Immune thrombocytopenia, which may cause the, by some viral infections or some aplogenic factors inside the tissue. Thrombotic so microangiopathy, which is very important and early detection of it to, the, to subject the patient to durable uh, plan uh, as plasma which is very important. Otherwise, we will lose our patient because its prognosis is very bad. Uh, drug induced thrombocytopenia, we must know there is a, as a many drugs causing thrombocytopenia. Thro either immune mechanism or non-immune destruction of We have to look for the clinical diagnosis and always occur after within one week after exposure to the drug. And uh, it may drop the platelets too much, even less than 20,000 or more likely. Uh, a platelet count normalized <coughs> within one week after stopping this drug. And you must consider if you stop your drug, you will suspect the platelet will be returning to normal within a few hours. You know, I think it will take time according to the half life of the drug used or drug causing the thrombocytopenia. Uh, exams for drug causing uh, thrombocytopenia are donated contrast media. These are medications drugs like phenytoin. Carbamazine, valproic acid, H2 blockers, cyanipidine, rantidine, monoclonal antibi antibodies, antibiotics as vancomycin, lanipidine, kephalosporin, penicillin, all these can cause thrombocytopenia. Also, there are some causes of platelet dysfunction, and the number may be normal, like in cases of uremia, and the patient will improve after dialysis or with desmopressin which is a synthetic vasopressin <coughs> through either inhalation or IV. Hypothermia is a common cause of thrombocytopenia, especially following a cardiac and thoracic surgery. Antibiotics like penicillin, kephalosporins, antiplatelet agents like salicylate and the flow, which we use as antiplatelets, and must be stopped five to seven days before any operative intervention. Treatment of thrombocytopenia really, uh, which we have to, it is the etiology. If it is a defective production or it is non-immune or immune, we have to different. If it is due to defective production or non-immune, we can give vitamins as folic acid and B12, maybe the first. We have to treat the etiology. We have to stop the toxins or any drug and support the platelet uh, with platelet transfusion if the patient is accepting bleeding or he is going to invasive pneumonia. 
Uh, Prietal transfusion assess the risk of bleeding first. And the goal is dependent on the clinical conditions of the patient. 10,000 is a target for stable patients, not bleeding patients. But if your patient is exerting some bleeding, even superficial bleeding, we have to, the target would be 50,000. We have to correct to 50,000. Uh, we can give five to six units of platelet concentrate or single donor one unit per 90 days. And every center really put his policy and his protocol for how much is the target he must, uh, he, he must reach before any intervention. Immune thrombocytopenia is a common really, and it, 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 which is referred before as idiopathic thrombocytopenia. Immune thrombocytopenia is a diagnosis of execution. We have to execute the other causes of thrombocytopenia, like TTB, HLS, and other causes, and the drug disease, and so on. If you, you don't find any other cause, maybe we do IT. IT is believed to result from the development of immune globulin, photoantibody, targeting structural platelet membrane or glycoprotein. Immune thrombocytopenia purpura, there are two types of immune thrombocytopenia purpura, and we saw the acute form following any viral infection, especially in children, and the chronic form, which we see in the other, especially in women, and you can see also a common cause of thrombocytopenia during pregnancy. When platelet count drops below 30,000 without active breathing, clinical observation is indicated. When significant bleeding of care, treatment is initiated, and we have to give, in the case of ITV, we have to give prednisone one milligram per kg per oral once daily with a slow tapering after that. Or we have the second line of therapy for ITV, which is rituximab and CD20, 375 milligram per square meter IV once weekly for one month in refractory cases of ITV. Or we can use thrombobiotin like agents such as l thrombovage, uh, 25 to 75 milligram once daily, or romiprostom, 1 to 10 microgram per kg once a week. Uh, in, this is in case of severe ITV or refractory IV, uh, ITV to uh, brignisone. But most of the cases respond to brignisone. The refractory cases can proceed to splenectomy, can achieve complete remission in two thirds of the patients, however, can increase the risk of thrombosis and infection with encapsulated bacteria. And so we have to vaccinate the patient with a previous vaccine against streptococcus pneumonia, Haemophilus influenza, and type B meningitis, Neisseria pneumonia. Very important. Or we can give an ITB the intravenous immunoglobulin if we want, to, uh, if we want a rapid effect and dramatic effect in patients who are actively bleeding or those with greatly count less than 10,000. Intravenous immunoglobulin, one gram per kg, once per day for one to two days is attempted. And also you have to get intravenous anti-D immunoglobulin in recess positive patients. Uh, in life-threatening uh, bleeds in ITB patients, we have to transfuse platelet, can also be initiated, which otherwise then I would normally to be infected due to rapid consumption. But if the patient is indeed a bleeder, we have to get. Also could be treated by uh, some uh, try as a cyclopene, cyclosporin, benazole, dapson, vincristine, mitosin. We shifted to the other uh, cause of uh, thrombocytopenia, which is thrombotic, thrombotic thrombocytopenia, which is very dangerous, really, and it is some sort of microangiopathy, which causes some sort of hemolysis and aggregation of platelets inside the vessels, and due to deficiency of bone well brand factor cleaving metalloprotease Adam's serpine. And this is very important, really. This Adam's serpine is very important and cleaving the bone wall brand uh, factor and keeping it, to, uh, making it pieces and prevent the accumulation of, or prevent the macromolecule formation from bone wall brand factor, who is the initial factor initiating the platelet formation. Uh, TTB is characterized by some items which are very important to not forget. 
thrombocytopenia, hemolytic anemia, we see chest plosides and the peripheral see fever, renal dysfunction, CNS dysfunctions, BT, BTT normal. Coagulation factor here normal. The problem here is in the platelets itself due to efficiency of Adam's circuit. And the deficiency of Adam's circuit may be due to uh, congenital deficiency of this uh, enzyme or, or which is a metalloprotease or due to autoantibodies formed against Adam's circuit as in severe viral infection and hypoxemia and sepsis and so on. Hemolytic anemia, very important fever may not be seen in some, so, in some uh, patients. Renal dysfunctions also not so high like hemolytic uremic syndrome. Hemolytic uremic syndrome, we find uh, an exaggerated renal dysfunction than in people. CNS dysfunction also, you can see a different degree of CNS dysfunction, ranging from just headache, confusion, up to coma in some patients. As this the demonstrations uh, demonstrate what is the action of von Willebrand factor, as we see at the start of coagulation, it will attract the glycoprotein one receptors in the platelets and platelets start to aggregate. After that, Adam's 13 starts to destroy this von Willebrand factor, right here, and so prevent the formation of macro molecules from one will blend factor right here, which will be exposed to some vasculation and aggregates inside the uh, vasculature. As we see here, we have a picture of thrombocytopenic turbula due to deficiency of Adam's 13 or formation of antibodies against Adam's 13. And this is very important. This uh, metal, <coughs> metal protease destruct this one will blend factor diseases and so prevent the aggregation of platelets to and consequently formation of thrombi inside the vasculature. These are the typical presentations of uh, peripheral smear for a patient who is suffering from PPD, thrombocytopenia. I uh, will find the reticulocytes, I find schistocytes, the typical schistocytes, extracted RBC. The patient suffering from fever, suffering from thrombocytopenia, hemolytic anemia, uh, renal dysfunctions, and CMS. There are two types of TPD. A familiar type characterized by constitutional deficiency of Adam's thirteen or autoantibodies against Adam's thirteen. Adam's thirteen, as I told you, is a metallo. Is acting to cleave and extract the von Willebrand factor multi years, and thus it prevents the thrombus formation by impairing platelet aggregation. A deficiency in Adam's 13 activity can be serious, and also we can see it in DIC, in HUS, Mulitic Syndrome, in preeclampsia, in Help Syndrome, uh, in some sort of severe septicemia. Also on COVID-19, they found the drop in Adam's 13 and exaggerated multi macromolecules of von Willebrand. Also in any viral infection, I want to say the, this mechanism is uh, we found that, but a different in degree. In H1N1, really in viral infection, as H1N1, we found also decrease in Adam's 13, but in COVID-19, it is an exaggerated. Uh, mechanism and there is too much deficiency of Adam CT and, uh, and in, uh, maybe less than 5%. You can find it in hemolytic aromic syndrome, but it, it can reach 40-30% in DIC, in preclans, in M syndrome. But if it, Adam 13 drops less than 5%, we can consider it. Severely reduced Adam 13's activity or the presence of an inhibitors or immunoglobulin G antibody confirm the diagnosis of it. blood must be taken prior to treatment to assess the baseline activity of Adam 13. PTV defined by Pentada, as I, tell, I told, the microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, fever, neurological manifestation, renal impairment. This is a Pentad. Uh, rules for diagnosis of TPD. But it differs in severity and it differs in its percentage. We find 
slide, um, yes, no, the patient who is patient, patient with no fever, but it is mostly uh, manifested by this standard of symptoms, which are microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, fever, urological manifestation, hematoma. Renal impairment in HUS, hemolytic uremic syndrome, is highly manifested. Than in the median platelet count is typical 10,000 to 30,000. And this patient needs urgent management, urgent plasma transfusion, urgent fresh frozen plasma transfusion. However, TTB can present without full painted up to 35% of patients not having neurological signs at the location, and the renal abnormality and the fever are not prominent features. Neurological presentation, as I said, they range from headache to confusion up to coma. Thrombotic thrombocytopenic failure management, we include plasma phoresis, very important, plus fresh frozen plasma infusion to clear the antibody and to increase the level of Adam's start steroids, rituximab, not enough. Red blood cell transfusion is a patient exhibiting too much hemolysis and dropping of hemoglobin. Related only for severe bleeding, follow LDH, so long LDH is high, there is hemolysis, follow hemoglobin level, and the have to bleed also, follow to the platelets, and cap CZ map is also one of the uh, treatment recently, and you have to vaccinate your patients again to manage the type infections with use tablets map or Hemolytic uremic syndrome is the other important item in uh, disease in causing the thrombocytopenia and ice. And the etiology may be due to Shiga toxins producing E. coli, some strains of E. coli causing releasing Shiga toxins and the co causing the hemolytic uremic syndrome associated with some diarrhea, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, hypoglycemia, and so on, or due to this regulation of the complement or defective complement, especially complement C5 regulation, may be genetic or acquired. Hemolytic thermic syndrome, thrombocytopenic microangiopathy also. Thrombocytopenic microangiopathy, aggregation of platelets inside the, the vasculatures and the blocking and the blocking the vessels and the thrombi and so on, ischemia and, and, and so on, need urgent management. Uh, renal dysfunction, uh, the renal dysfunction is uh, clarified in this syndrome, in the syndrome, and the more common and the more exaggerated than with ETP, more than thrombocytopenic therapy, mostly need dialysis. In hemorrhagic treatment, uh, plasma exchange, dialysis, or we can use eclogizumab, anti-C5, and a typical HUS, and we have also to vaccinate your patient with meningococcus. Vaccine again is one of the HUS has a common mechanism with TTB, but it's connected features in more severe and more severe kidney impairment with HUS. Uh, there are two types of uh, HUS. The typical form, as I said, which is caused by E. coli, strain 157, the release of chicken toxins, or the atypical form would be to uh, complement the defect against the complement system. The lab investigations are useful in establishing the diagnosis of a microangiopathic hemolytic uh, anemia, presence of schistocytes, as I said in TTP, that's new. Normal coagulation tests, BT, BTT are normal, coagulation factors are normal, and increased creatinine as a marker of renal injury in both TTP and HUS but more than HUS. The first line of treatment in cases of TTB and HUS is plasma phoresis again, and the administration of fresh frozen plasma soon as, as soon as possible. Plasma phoresis is reported, is repeated till normal level of platelet and the LDH are reached. For kidney impairment, temporary dialysis could be required. And we are, really we saw many patients of HUS and and they relieved by frequent dialysis and frequent plasma treatments. For a typical HUS eclosizumab, you have to use a monoclonal anti-C5 inhibitor, and it's a promising version of this, and you have to use 
vaccinate our patient, as I said, for many total bronchitis. Heparin induced thrombocytopenia is another problem in our, our ICU, especially the immune one, which is mediated by immune G, uh, due to formation of antibody against the heparin platelet factor or complex. Uh, and we have to detect as early as possible as TTB and the HUS because if those microangiopathy problems may cause end of life of your patient if not detected early and uh, It can be caused by unfractionate heparin and low molecular weight heparin, and we have to monitor the platelet count, especially in day four to 15. And I think the fourth test all of us are oriented with that. Uh, very important for early prediction for early prediction of it. Of course, this continue happening even if this flushing doses we have to stop and if platelets less than 50 thousands uh, or decrease more than 30 to 50 percent, uh, breathing is rare, but thrombosis is common in 20 to 50 percent and is more venous than arterial and can end. Uh, in the anger view as the limb of the patient or the right of the patient. What is the risk factor for him? Cardiovascular surgery or sobatic surgery is common in ICU patients, in women more than women. Unfractionated insulin of hip is higher than the low molecular weight heparin. Uh, therapeutic IV doses more than subcutaneous doses. Longer duration of therapy also is a problem. Uh, hip diagnosis, there are several lab tests for diagnosis and projecting that uh, as functional platelet condition. The heparin induced platelet condition, serotonin is a safe, so it is highly specific. Also, uh, ELISA, so, so antigen protection and anti platelet factor for antibodies, essential, but less than serotonin is. And the clinical scenario, scenario really is very important. And this is a four test, four T test for. Detecting the head diagnosis score. And the really we 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 over diagnose head in cancer. We over diagnose head in cancer. So, so if we can uh, uh, make uh, this uh, table and predict how much is the score in our patients, we can predict actually who is suffering from it. If thrombocytopenia decreased by 50% or more, neither more than 20,000, it will take two score, two points. If decrease 30 to 50 and the needle is from 10 to uh, from 10 to 20, 15,000, it will take score one and it decrease, uh, and it decrease, uh, it decrease less than uh, 30 percent or neither is less than 10 percent, it will take zero. Also, the timing of split will decrease. Always it decreases from fifth to tenth, tenth day of administration of it. But suppose your patient telling the heparin before it will appear to less than one day uh, uh, after exposure to heparin, take two points score. If the uh, duration is not is outside, this will take one and so on. You can have thrombosis is present also will take two. And so if you if your score is less than three points low probability for head, if the score from four to five intermediate probability, if from six to eight points it is high probability, you have to stop heparin and you have to start another entity. And that is, even if there is no thrombosis, even if there is no thrombosis, you can't give heparin, uh, warfarin. Uh, some ask, well, I can't give warfarin. No, you can't give because warfarin will cause initially anti Protein C at the decrease, protein C effect, and so we expose to more thrombosis. You have to use uh, Argatroban, two micrograms per kg per minute IV, continuous infusion for one to three hours. Argatroban, uh, by Valeridine approved for use in PCI only, Pontabarinox, maybe not FDA approved, anticoagulant, even if no thrombosis. And so you have to start even if no thrombosis. Uh, you can give platelets if there is severe bleed. You can give platelets if there is severe bleed. And at what time I start warfarin? You can start warfarin after the platelets becoming normal. If you can start warfarin. Dibigatran and, uh, and the DUAC uh, inhibitors are uh, unknown till now if their efficacy in such situations. 
but ارجع كنت بحجز more specific and explicit. DIC is a common problem also in ICU and one of the main causes of thrombocytopenia and we can see DIC in many patients with severe multi-organ failure, with severe uh, sepsis, with placenta, uh, approaching placenta, metroplasm. In some situations, we can see DIC in which there is activation of the coagulation system and microvascular thrombosis in different organs and the multiple organ failure. And it causes some showers of thrombi, not uh, a massive uh, thromb, not a big thrombus. It causes also oozing, not uh, causing severe bleeding. An increase of the BT and the PPT and thrombus, increase the fibrinogen to all the coagulation factors and all the lab investigation are dearranged in the IC. And so you can differentiate and you can diagnose your DIC is you will find the BT, BT increase, thrombocytopenia, fibrinogen is decreased, fibrin, decreation product is increased, the dimer, and so on. All are uh, DIC. Uh, <coughs> systemic thrombo uh, is a systemic thrombohemorrhagic disease. Thrombohemorrhagic. Thrombosis at the same time and the, my, and the microthrombi all over the body, which causes multi organ failure, and at the same time, severe oozing from every point of body from people, venous puncture, it is an hemorrhage. And so, thrombohemorrhagic problem associated with gas. And as we see, all the lab results are the arranged and Treatment of DIC according to the situation and according to the underlying problem there. But avoid any transfusion as you can. But if the patient is suffering from severe bleeding from the center of your chair, from, you can give platelets, if it's severely thrombocytopenic and giving fresh frozen plasma, cryovacillate, catching the prenogen practice, and so on. If the patient, but try, don't to transfuse because we will put the disease. Uh, for fresh frozen plasma transfusion, we must know and we must be oriented by XIMR, it is 1.5 to 1.6. And so don't uh, try to correct IMR less than 1.5. If your patient accepting IMR 1.5, don't correct by fresh frozen because fresh frozen can't increase. Because XIMR 1.5 to 1.6. The dose, you know, don't forget the dose, two to three units fresh frozen plasma every eight hours, six to eight hours. You, know, you can get, uh, if you use platelets, every six to every six units of platelet concentrate, equal one unit fresh frozen plasma. And all uh, follow the PT and the PT if you transfer fresh frozen plasma. Cryoprecipitate uh, contains the factor eight, factor 13, which stabilizes the clot. Uh, uh, fibrinogen, von brand factor, and so indicated in hypofibrinogenia. Uh, if, uh, if, the plate, if the fibrinogen less than 100 milligram percent, in cases of trauma and obstetric hemorrhage, and fibrinogen, we try to keep it. If, if fibrinogen less than 150 to 200 milligram per deciliter, you can transfuse cryoprecipitate from 8 to 10 units. Uh, other treatment of DIC heparin uh, and controversial for its use, but in some situations like DIC with thrombosis, with thrombosis, perpharmacy, amniotic fluid, yeah, severe persistent DIC, bromoyl uh, we can use heparin. Uh, fibrinolytic inhibitors also don't uh, forget uh, epsilon amino carboxylic acid trans acid in severe fibrinolysis, like patients with severe cirrhosis and like patients exerting uh, too much fibrinolysis. And this is, I can uh, clarify from the, uh, uh, for, from the thermoelastometry. Uh, I think there is no time today to, to explain how to, to demonstrate the uh, to rotum or the leg. Uh, you have five minutes, Yeah, five minutes. Uh, Robian, okay. Uh, European uh, doctors now don't uh, don't transfuse uh, this uh, factor except after subject the, uh, subject in the blood of the patient who wrote them or take to demonstrate which factor is the 
no one uh, transfuse fresh frozen plasma. No. We have to transfuse the factor which is different, deficit really, to avoid uh, excessive fresh frozen plasma transfusion, which can cause really and allergic mutations and obvious. So rhombocytopenia and chronic liver disease, uh, it is a long topic, and I want to now to speak about thrombocytopenia in certain situations, like liver disease and uh, neonatal thrombocytopenia and multi-organ uh, failure uh, thrombocytopenia and infection and intertoxemia and its effect on thrombocytes. All these are very important factors, uh, items, uh, which we have to be oriented with treatment ICU. Uh, for example, uh, thrombocytopenia with liver uh, disease and with a lot of patients to reduce the production of the thermoregulating hormone, which is thermobiotin production, or reduce the bone marrow production due to vi virus infection, uh, like hepatitis C or HIV or H virus, alcohol, cirrhosis, iron, hepcidine, and the prohepcidine level in the liver cirrhosis is decreased, and so there is an iron load and hemochromatosis. And this is exposed also to uh, thrombocytopenia. Some medications like interferon and azathioprine, many medications we use in liver disease also predispose to thrombocytopenia. Immunological destructions, it is common in liver disease also. And we can, uh, thrombocytopenia <coughs> is common due to immunological destruction, as ITD. Uh, hepatitis C virus, we can predict liver disease from thrombocytopenia. 30% of hepatitis C patients, we can predict them through, uh, through lab results uh, predicting thrombocytopenia, and so we diagnose them. Uh, direct uh, drug induces thrombocytopenia, sepsis. All the sepsis is also one of the factors and endotoxemia which decrease Adam's system and it's false to thrombocytopenia. Liver disease, don't forget hypo, uh, hyperfibrinolysis. And I think most of the patients during operation need antifibrinolytic, like tranexamic or epsilon amide. And also bacterial translocations is very common in liver disease patients. And it's supposed to strong uh, 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 And as you, you see here, the liver secrete and uh, thrombopiotin, which regulates the platelet and the mucoviscide production of platelets. A liver disease, thrombobiotin is, is decreased, and so mucoviscide is not stimulated, and no platelet production, and due to sequestration inside the skin, the patient suffering from hydro thrombobiotin uh, and consequently, consequently uh, thrombocytes will be decreased. Uh, I think we can delay the other topic to another uh, lecture, and uh, enough to avoid taking. Speaker, thanks for you and thanks for the review. So, so thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, uh, Professor Mir. And we have a good number of questions here about uh, this lecture. Let's start about uh, your talk about uh, Adam's uh, 13 drops. What happens in COVID patients when it is less than 5%? Is there any recommendation? The sort of what you say? Okay, so Hello? do you hear me now? I Is my voice okay now, Prof? Again, the question is what you say? Okay, if I am COVID 19, Adam's 13 drop less than 5%, is there anything to do? Really, in COVID, uh, in COVID uh, 19, is there is a great problem. Yeah, as I said, there are thrombotic complications, and there are excessive amount of von Willebrand factors. It's well known, about 100 times more than in other viral infections as H1N1. But the main problems, most of the, about 58% uh, of COVID-19 patients suffering from thrombocytopenia. And so please don't give a fixed dose of uh, Kilixan. Please, again, don't give a fixed dose of Kilixan. We have to titrate the dose according to your patient. And also, don't forget the effect of head. Kilixan may induce head, and the diagnosis here may be difficult. 
الو يس بروف يس بروف سامعني يا دكتور وليد يس يس وي ار ويز يو يس اي كان هير يو بليز كونسنتريت اون ذيس فايل دونت جيف ا فيكس دوز اوف كليكسان اور هيبرين ان يور بيشنت ويز كوفيد 19 تايفريت اكوردنج تو بليتليت نمبر اند فولو اب ذا بليتليت بيكوز هي ماي اولسو اكزيبت سام بروبلم از هيد يو دونت نو And so some patients run, run with fixed dose of Clixan. Uh, this is very uh, high run. About Adam, Adams, Adams, uh, Adams, Adams, uh, we have to ask, if it is auto antibody, we have to give steroids in such uh, situation if it is immune or due to anti antibodies. Uh, if there is defect and uh, we can, we have to improve the platelet function through desmopressin and the other. Uh, so two questions with the same uh, meaning, uh, Prof. Do we have any alternative uh, for heparin in case if we have HIT or heparin-induced thrombocytopenia? What's the alternative? And uh, another question about ECMO. If the patient has HIT, can you start uh, him on extracorporeal membrane oxygenation in presence of HIT or not? Thank you. Uh, about about uh, about uh, alternative anticoagulant ergotroban is the, the ideal one in uh, antagonizing the the thrombotic complications of uh, of head cells. The platelet number is normally resume usual uh, treatment. About ECMO and I saw uh, in ECMO also we have to use ergotroban or Altern or alternative anticoagulant. Alternative anti You have to use it if, even if there is no coagulation or so on. Uh, a question from Omar Al-Adi. He says, what's the clinical differentiation between HIT1 and 2, please? Between? HIT1, HIT type 1, and HIT type 2. The two and types immunogenic, of HIT. Uh, it, which is important for me is the immunogenic one. The immunogenic one. Which, as, as we see, the 4T test will clarify the difference between them. Okay, so the, it's, it's by lab, it's not clinical. Clinical throw serotonin and throw the autoantibodies. Uh, throw lab results. So a question from Abdurrahman Muhammad. If the patient have kidney damage from hemolytic remix syndrome. And then, uh, sorry, Dr. Walid, if, if the, type, the type 1, the type 1, Uh, the platelets don't go down by time. If we observe the patients for clinical evaluation, the not no progressive drop in platelets. Okay, that that's a good clinical clue. Uh, what else? We have two questions here live. We may take questions from attendees. Uh, Elmina Muqtasil, you can ask your question. Please go ahead, Elmina. I mean, if you hear me, you can ask your question live. Okay, it looks, he doesn't hear me. So, um, I think we covered most of the questions that were for questions here before. Okay, so is there in a cut, is there any cut off for central line insertion for the platelet count, Prof. Samir? Uh, uh, for uh, for uh, central line insertions, uh, it's uh, uh, better to be to be uh, 50,000. Better so to if be I, 50, if, 50, if I have a patient, if I have a patient with less than 50,000 and he needs a central line, should I go and insert the central line with ultrasound guidance or transfuse him platelets first? This uh, if the, no, no, don't transfuse. If the patient to not bleeder, not bleeder, we can we can uh, going down to thirty uh, thousand. No and okay. INR, if INR even to uh, two point five, we can insert central uh, venous line uh, under uh, ultrasound. Okay. Another question from Basim Yahya. He says, if the patient received one dose of clopidogrel, should I stop it for what? operative intervention? Clopidogrel. What? What? If the patient received one dose, just one dose of clopidogrel, should I wait for seven days to start the surgery? 
Yes. Even one dose? Yes, yes. Good. Uh, so another question from Isa Morshid. How many uh, units of platelets raise the platelet count? How much? So if I give him one unit, I'm expecting how much increase in his platelets? Really, they, uh, it is written in the, most of the books. It can raise to increase to 5,000, but, uh, but I, uh, we, we, uh, we don't, uh, it not happen that the clinical uh, in our ICU. Even with five to six units uh, platelet transfusion, sometimes the platelet is not going up, according to patient. Really. Perfect. Uh, so if any of our uh, panelists have a question regarding thrombocytopenia in critical care settings, uh, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Any of Dr. Ahmad Madi from Rahashim? What you say? What you say again? I'm, I'm, I'm offering the questions and mic to our guest uh, speakers uh, from panelist side, if they have any questions before we shift to the next lecture. Okay, thanks very much, Prof. Samir. I'm sorry it looks that we have no more questions uh, from the panelist side.